Okay, um, assuming we now have a database in MySQL, how do we create a table in that database? I'm going to be using a PHP MyAdmin to do this. To get there, it depends on what your host is. I'm using DreamHost, and so I just go to the um, the domain uh, for uh, the um, for the MySQL server. If you're using another host, you might have to go to your panel and click on PHP MyAdmin, for example. But however you get there, and if you do it that way, you'll probably not have to enter in a password. I'm entering in here the username and password of the database, of my database user. So I go like that, and uh, you'll see I have three databases over here on the left-hand side. Most of you will end up with an information schema database if you're using DreamHost especially. Um, and you'll have two, uh, well, you'll have no databases, or if you've created one, you'll have one database. In this case, I have one database, AORV3, which I've created. I'm going to do some operations on that. You'll see that I have actually 46 tables already in here. Where did those come from? Well, I've installed uh, Drupal on this database. It's okay, I can still put a table in there that Drupal's gonna ignore. So I'm just gonna, you probably will have an empty database, but I'm gonna, I'm working with one that already has some, some tables installed. At the very bottom of this structure tab, which is where you start out, you'll see a create a new database. And I'm gonna do an ice cream social. So I'll call it IS, ice cream social, there we go. And I'm gonna do, um, well, I've thought this through a little bit ahead of time. I think I'm gonna have five fields. If I have to change that, I can later on. So then I get this um, this layout that tells me um, what asking me what the fields are. So I'm going to have five fields, as I said. I'm going to have a, a, a field called ID. Remember that every database in uh, SQL needs every table in SQL needs to have a, a a unique primary key, something that keeps every um, record separate. And so since I don't have anything naturally for this, I'm going to use ID. I would say 90% of the time when I'm doing a table, the first field I put in is ID. Um, let's do the name of the person. Let's do the um, flavor that they like. Um, let's do how many scoops they want. And then we'll do um, time. So time stamp, a timestamp for when they actually submitted their request. So this is the database that's going to store something from a form on the web. So we have ID, name, flavor, scoops, and time. ID is going to be an integer. We'll just do a big int for the heck of it. I don't think we're going to have um, millions of people coming to our party, but just in case. Um, so a big int is a very large integer. Actually, we could probably just get away with an integer. We're not going to get that big. So um, this is going to be a unique ID that's going to be a number from from uh, I think zero to 65,000 for for uh, it, int. And then the name, which is gonna be variable characters. That means a number of characters in a row. And you have to tell them the maximum you think they'll be. Let's just assume we'll have some people with very long names like my own there and we'll, we'll do 200. I don't think we'll go over 200 characters. Um, don't wanna make that too short or you get that annoying thing where someone truncates your name. And you, you've probably run into that at some point, having getting something addressed to you if you have a long name like I do that only gets the first five letters of your last name or something. The flavor, eh, flavors can also get pretty complicated. Let's do 150. Um, scoops, how many scoops do we want? In this case, I think we could probably get away not with an integer, but with something called a tiny int. That's a very small integer. Um, in fact, it's from zero to 256. If someone comes to our party wanting 256 scoops of ice cream, we will send them away. Finally, we have time, and this like ID is one that we're not actually going to enter in when we submit a record. Uh, this one's going to be uh, a um, uh, timestamp, and um, so we don't need to tell it how long it is. It's going to be telling us the time, and by default, in this case, we want it to be a current timestamp. What that means is that when someone submits a record, the system will automatically date and t give us the time and date and insert it to tell us when that record has been inserted into the database. Um, the rest of these I'm going to leave with no default. I think that's fine for what I'm doing here because we're always going to be telling it something, I think. Um, Collation, I'm not going to worry about right now. Attributes, I'm not going to worry about right now. This tells us kind of a little bit more about the type. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about null. Um, index is whether you want the thing indexed. In this case, we definitely, every database, we want to have a primary index. So I'm going to make this ID be our primary index, a unique thing that is uh, primary to this table and that way we always know that we're gonna have a separate ID for each record and then this is is abbreviated AI let's see if I hover over it it says 
auto increment, which means that automatically when you insert a record, if you don't give an ID, it will automatically assign it to the next available number. So this way we don't even have to worry about ID. It can just be there and be part of the internal part of the database. Automatically, if we don't include anything, it'll just automatically add it to the next, uh, bring it, you know, if we have five records and the last record ID was five, it'll automatically insert this with a record ID of six. Um, all right, so that gives us our database. If we needed to add a field, we could hit, this is a little confusing in terms of the UI of PHP MyAdmin, but if we wanted to add another record, we could hit go and it would add one more field, but I'm pretty happy with what I've got here. We do a quick look over. Yep, looks good to me. I'll hit save. And now I have the database. So there's not, if I hit browse, there's nothing in it. That's why it has that little red X. There's no records in here yet to browse, but all the structure is set up and it's ready to take my stuff.